Um, we've worked with Historic and we've gotten it approved by the Historic Commission and they have now going for their building permit soon. If they haven't already, I believe it was coming this week, they are coming in to apply. So construction should commence there soon and we'll have a lot of busy work down in that tight area of Haven Street because the next one is right across the street on Gould Street. Um, this is a redevelopment of the EMARC site, which again was another historic property. Um, historic has approved that as well, maintaining some of the historic properties of that building. But it's another 40-hour mixed-use project where we'll have commercial on the streetscape to promote walking down Haven and Gould again, and then residential on top. It's 55 rental units with a lot of um, affordable units, 14 will be affordable. Um, it's actually a very good building because we don't enforce LEED standards, but the designer for this built this to be LEED Silver Certified, which is, helps reduce emissions, keep heating, very low impact design on the development. So that was nice to see, and it's nice to get those in town. There's 69 parking spaces for this unit, and they'll all be within the development garage spaces and more. They have bike storage, they have outdoor seating again, and a proposed courtyard. Um, I don't know if you want to hold your question to the end, or? Up to you. Sure. <laughs> um, so this is another one right along Haven and Gould Street. They're very close together, but it will liven up the streetscape and get people walking downtown, get more business in there, get more people downtown just through the number of units alone. And we're very excited for that as well. And then we have right down the street here on Main Street, it's 467 Main Street, it's the redevelopment of the Sunoco site. Um, this was approved just about a year ago in February, so they're transforming the gas station into a four-story, again, mixed-use building, again, 40 R. that's the point. So we'll see commercial down here on the bottom, again, um, retail, restaurant, whatever can fit in there. They have proposed outdoor seating, they have 39 parking spaces within the garage in the lower level. Uh, we have 15 one-bedroom units and 16 two-bedroom units along with roof decks and balconies and two common areas for the residents to enjoy. Um, so that will liven up Main Street a little bit, make it more walkable, nice streetscape with street trees and new sidewalking and everything like that. So that's another exciting development. They have demoed it and the foundation permit was issued. So. That should be up hopefully within the next year or two, but again, you can never tell with construction. So, um, but it is coming, so that's another exciting project. And this one is a bit different. Um, this is 14 Chapin, and there is no mixed use component to this, it's strictly residential. There's three units, um, townhouse units for sale, of course, but each one is very well built and there's a lot of amenities to it. They have two bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms, an attic space and bonus space, which inversely could become a third bedroom if you would intend to do so. Each unit has a two car garage we can see here. And it's a very good development with eight total parking spaces, outside decks, retaining walls and landscaping going all around the area. Um, so that's an exciting project, and one that you don't see of strictly residential, so it had some different barriers to it, but it was good to get that in. And one I didn't mention on the slides is 90 to 92 Green Street down the street. A similar type of development where they're doing the gold standards, I believe, but, um, but those again are just residential. Now we will get into 40 Bs, which is a little different. Again, 40 Bs prioritizes dense development and affordable housing. Um, this can benefit the town in quite a few ways, not only the different incomes that can come in, but also offers us some protections in some way, as we've worked so hard on our housing needs and addressed it very well. The state is actually Reading's almost a model community they use us as when discussing 40Bs because we've done such a good job with these developments. 
so the first one here is Schoolhouse Commons, which you might recognize as the St. Agnes Church. Uh, this was approved in July. It's a three-story building on Moving Street, and it's a multi-family project with 20 rental units. And so typically in 40 Bs, we like to see 20 to 25 percent of the unit be labeled as affordable. And affordable means anywhere from 80 percent of the average median income to 60 percent, 50 percent. We typically see a lot of 80 percent of the AMI. So that's why we have four units here at 80 percent. And, oh no, sorry, school has this 50% AMI, which is very exciting. So sort that of makes it that much more affordable. Uh, many more people can uh, come into town where construction has already begun on this. So we're hoping to see this one soon as well. The building permit is issued. We've worked hard to get this off the ground. And we're very much looking forward to this one, as well as the MAC. Um, this one's had a few different names. The Met, the Metropolitan at Reading Station, formerly Reading Village, but this is the official name, the Metropolitan at Reading Station, because you can just tell how close it is to our depot here and our train stop. This is the development here. Uh, it's replacing, it's on three lots and replacing three existing structures. You might remember the Doucette building. It was another very large building down in that area. Um, so they're taking over and they are doing a lot of multifamily again. 68 units held in this one building with 17 units deemed affordable. Uh, there's 22 one, or sorry, uh, 51 bedroom units with 12 being affordable, 11 two bedroom units with three being affordable, and seven three bedroom units with two of those being affordable. So there's a lot of opportunity right in this development here. Uh, there's 85 parking spaces within this development, all to be contained within the ground level. And what's unique about that is typically 40 Bs have more. We call it a 1.5 space per unit ratio. We allowed this one to do a 1.25 to try to limit parking and impervious area there because we would like to see more transit-oriented development how people take the trains instead of their cars, take the bikes, walk downtown instead of driving their cars. So it's a thing a lot of towns are doing now is reducing parking requirements to try to create that walkability and get more people out of their cars. And then we have Eaton Lakeview, which is down the street here, down on the corner of Eaton and Lakeview. So this one is still going through the process um, they, you might have heard, you might have come. They're still going through the ZBA process now. We're working with the development team to find what works best for the town. You'll see here that it's 86 units total. This wasn't always the case. They came to us, I believe, proposing 200, and then that got knocked down to 120, and now again down to 86. Um, but what's different about this development is they have included 12 ownership townhouse units on one of the lots, and then the other lot will be three rental buildings of units. There's two 12-unit buildings and a 50-unit building, you'll see in a second. But that's to kind of ease the transition. The neighborhood worked very, very well with the development teams and with staff. They were almost a group of experts. They had environmentalists, they had architects, they had public spokesmen, they were very, very well prepared and it's been a pleasure to work with them and create this development for the town of Reading because it's a very exciting one. Um, as you'll see in this next picture, these are the townhouse units here on lot A. Um, again, some things could change on this project as it hasn't officially been approved yet, so we're working towards that goal to approve it, but some things could change, but Right now, this is just a quick rendering of what the townhouse units may be like. And here is the uh, rental unit project, which is two 12-unit buildings in the front and a 50 in the back there. So kind of hides it and makes that transition from the neighborhood to this big, dense development a little easier. The development team has been really good with um, the staff and neighborhood as they've incorporated a lot of green space, rain gardens, low impact design. Um, they've really helped us and 
to create the best possible project. With the townhouses will be three bedroom units, and three of those will be deemed affordable. And then rental units will have, again, the 12 unit buildings and the 50 unit building, and 22 of those units will be affordable. So they have 136 parking spaces on site. They have bike racks, again, rain gardens, and more open space. Another unique idea with this project is in this area here, what was proposed to be parking the neighborhood and us worked with them to future bank that, we call it. So when the development is first put up, it will actually be green space and like a pocket park of trees and benches and more. Um, but it's future bank that if the project ends up needing it, it can be converted into parking spaces. So it was a very forward, progressive thinking to try to not only remove some impervious area, but also add it back if the development does need it. So it was a very cool process and very cool idea. And we're hoping to wrap this up within the next month or two, but the development process has been long. It's been very, very helpful though to see how this project has come up off the ground. And it was really my first project from start to what will be finished, and I'm very excited for that. So as we move on from projects, those are most of the big development projects in town that's happening right now, but there's other things that the planning office does as well. Um, derived from this Eaton Lakeview development has come um, the Walker's Brook Drive corridor analysis and conceptual redesign, we call it. So you might know that Walkersburg Drive is kind of a nightmare. <laughs> um, John Street, Ash Street, and more you know, all tough intersections, a lot of traffic congestion there. Some of the lights don't make sense. So what we went with through this project was instead of a sort of band-aid approach of adding a stop sign or something, we took it one step further and are reaching out to some potential firms to do a conceptual redesign of the whole entire corridor for us and see what we can come up with, whether it's something like a rotary, something like more sidewalks, a um, road diet, which would create bike lanes and sidewalks and more to try to promote a more well-oriented development in the area. But again, we'll see where that goes. We'll see what comes out of the study. Nothing's been off the ground yet as we still work through this. 40B process, so it's a long-term future project that is something to look forward to and something to look at when we get to that point. Um, but here you can see some of the areas we'll be studying, the Walkersbrook Drive and Lakeview area, John Street and Walkersbrook Drive. We've included Ash and Maine, because that's a tough intersection up here on Eaton and Salem. And so a lot of these areas have already been studied due to the development we are eating this year, but we're taking it a step further and again doing a conceptual redesign um, and see what comes out of this project. So other than that, we also have a New Crossing Road District feasibility study. If you don't know New Crossing Road, that's our DPW area. Um, we actually got a Housing Choice Initiative grant due to our housing work, the 40B processes that we have put in, the 40Rs, the affordable units we've put into town. They awarded us with the Housing Choice Grant that we filed for over the summer, and we were awarded $50,000 for that. So we have decided to put it towards a feasibility study and market study of that new crossing road area because for years now there's been talk about relocating the DPW, would it be a regional thing, what can we do with the area, can we change zoning, can we create more development in this area. So we'll be working with a um, consultant to find out what exactly it is that can be done there. Uh, the consultant we're hoping to work with, Gamble Associates, is very, very, very well known and very well progressive. They've had a lot of projects in Lexington and across the country that are doing the same thing, whether it's design standards, market studies, road diets, 
design, anything like that. Campbell Associates has a fingerprint on, and they're very well known, and we're very much looking forward to working with them, seeing what comes out of this process. Because in our economic development action plan, this was labeled as a priority development area, and now as we wrap up the downtown, hopefully um, we will look towards these other areas to promote and develop and try to increase development and commercial activity for the town. So this will be an exciting project and again is much more long term and future based study. So other than that, we've applied for another grant that we haven't heard back from yet and do not know when, but we're looking to uh, create a downtown organization which would really be a champion of the downtown. Uh, they promote events, yearly events, annual, anything like that, business strategies that can help, again, promote economic development. So we've submitted a grant for that to hopefully get that and champion the businesses to unite together. Uh, these were just some quick examples, Beverly Main Streets, Chamber of Commerce in North Reading. Um, we might look again to bring our Chamber of Commerce back and um, that's been an exciting thing, but again, we don't know when exactly we'll hear words from that, and even if we don't get the grant, this may still be a possible idea because it would be very beneficial to our downtown as we have all these new developments, all these new projects, all these new businesses that to have an organization unite them together and get more people downtown would be a great thing. We have worked with this summer with Nelson Nygaard on parking utilization in the downtown because in every project this comes up, the number of parking spaces, is there enough, is there too many? Um, we actually worked with Nelson Nygaard back in 2008 or 9 and they did a parking study and then they came back and revisited that and most of the numbers actually came out fairly similar. Our parking is very underutilized Sometimes there's the conception that we don't have enough parking, but when they did the study, it's found that not all of it is utilized. So that has also came in with the wayfinding and branding project because wayfinding and branding will actually help us locate more of the public parking. It's different colored signs that are more viewable to drivers and others. Um, will point you to parking, we'll have um, the gateway entrance signs, we'll have banners, we're looking at designs right now, we're hoping to, we put a few actually out on Haven Street as a test run to see how it would work and we haven't exactly gotten any complaints from it yet, which is good, um, but it's an exciting thing as a lot of towns have moved forward with that and Beverly, Salem, they all have the colored signs and it really helps liven up your downtown area. Um, so that will only again help businesses and help people not just find parking in Reading, but stay in Reading because a lot of times people will be looking for parking, can't find it, they leave and we don't want that. So this will be an exciting project to just liven things up a little bit and give some uniqueness to our downtown. And then again, of course, our day-to-day -day work, subdivision, site plan reviews. Um, those are just kind of our day-to-day -day work where we're looking to get applications for these projects. We make sure they conform to our bylaws. So with all this big project going on, we still have our day-to-day -day work to do in between and try to make all of the developments the best they can for Reading. So that's our conclusion. We are very busy <laughs> in the town hall of Reading. So um, we're hoping that all of these projects and all of these things will help liven up our downtown, bring us more economic development, and create just a better Reading. And that's really what we're looking forward to and what we're planning for. It's why we plan to hopefully make this place a better place. And if you'd like, I can absolutely share this PowerPoint of the projects and we have some links to where you can find more information on those projects and the plan sets, the decision that was drafted on them, um, both for the 40Rs and site plan review projects and for the 40Bs as well. So 
We have a lot of info out there. It's all online. It's all available at Town Hall. So if you ever have any questions, please just ask me. Come by. I'm always there, like Jane said. So um, I'd be happy to help you guys and answer any questions. And we can absolutely do so right now as well. Thank you, though. Yes. Well, we moved here six years ago from the neighboring state, and every year my wife or I go all to town mm -hmm. and the state of Main Street. Mm -hmm. If you're a visitor coming into Reading and you use Main Street, you get a bad impression. Mm -hmm. Not only the dangers with the potholes and all, but the appearance. Mm -hmm. So that turns a lot of people off, and every year. We get the same answer, fall the state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we fall the state, and we're going on seven years, and nothing's been done about Main Street. So the I other question I have is, what's going on with the empty Walgreens building? Nothing yet. <laughs> we would like to fill it, absolutely. Um, there's a few vacant areas in town that we're looking to fill. We have a few developers come in and ask about them, but nothing's come off the ground yet. But as soon as we get something, we're looking for anything like the grocery store that's been recommended by residents to be downtown, any other type of development, um, but we'd have to see what we can get. Um, so far, no one has come forward with us to us with anything. But for Main Street, um, I believe that engineering does have some repaving projects going on. I believe the state will be out this spring to repave some of Main Street. Um, I'd have to, yeah, I think all of it actually, but there's, there's parts, so there's some work that has to be done, and um, that's why we're actually looking at some of those redesigns, and we're actually even talking about changing at the CPDC, Community Planning and Development Commission, which is a public hearing. If you subscribe to their agendas, you'll see that we're talking about zoning changes right now to propose at town meeting. And we're looking at the idea of perhaps changing some of South Main Street to get more streetscape development. You might have seen the 306 Main Street, the office building that's going up on South Main Street. It's closer to the street to, again, promote a better view, more walkable, um, that type of development. So that's what we're looking for. That's why we would like the downtown organization and we have our design standards for any new development that does go on South Main Street to again be at the streetscape and promote a walkable downtown and get people downtown. So we're looking and again Wayfinder too will help champion that gateway with new signs, new directions, all of that to liven it up. So <laughs> Can you explain the difference between a 40R and a 40D? Yes, so again, 40R is smart growth development. It's typically a mixed use development, but really it's more of a compact design, hopefully mixed use, but as we saw with 14 Chapman, it's not always mixed use, but it's really in a downtown area that promotes walkability, promotes transit-oriented development, whether it's the train station, bikes, walking. Um, so it really, that's why they call it smart growth. That's, is, is there an affordable percentage requirement? I don't believe it's required in 40 hours, but we do, I think in our zoning bylaw, in the DSGD, we do require 20% Affordable, so at least in ours, and I believe a lot of others do. But we see here that um, eight units will be deemed affordable at Sunoco. We have 14 units at the EMARC site and 10 at Postmark. So we always aim for 20 to 25 percent on these projects to be affordable. Um, that helps us build our inventory and some more planning statistics that go into that. Um, but 40 Bs are really state regulated. They can almost surpass your zoning bylaws, kind of. That's why you see such a much more dense development, like the 90 units, 120 units, and more. But those really, 
prioritize affordable housing. There's no mixed use aspect to those. It's just housing and helps you build your inventory of housing and affordable housing. So that's state regulated. They have a thing um, that if you hit 10% of your housing units to be deemed affordable, then you're almost safe from 40B. I don't want to throw out anything that um, might get me in trouble, but <laughs> um, we're almost at our 10% now. That's what we've been building for because 40Bs can go over your zoning bylaws. They're very controversial a lot of times, so that's why we work so hard to get ones that fit Reading and fit our development so that we can have the protections that we have and why we do developments like Eaton Lakeview has been through this process because of our housing um, qualifications that they've gone back and changed to make the development that much more friendly to Reading. So and what what does a, a development have to have or include to qualify for it? Um, so Laurie might be able to help more on that, but 40 Bs are limited in revenue, I know that. Um, and so the town doesn't have their 10 percent. Right. The affordable housing, then the developer can come in to so the town and bypass the zoning. But to be qualified as a 40 B, don't they have to have 10 or 20 percent affordable units? Um, yes, you do. It doesn't always have to be 10 or 20 percent, but if it's a rental and there's 20 percent, then the whole uh, the whole rental is qualifies on the SHI for where it's coming. The, uh, the subsidized housing. Is the yes. So if they apply for a comprehensive permit through the state that's a subsidized agency that looks at the affordable units and more, and so they go through a process with the state as well as with the town. Yes, in the back. Yeah, uh, this may be outside your purview, but at the far end of uh, Charles Street, where it meets uh, Haverhill, there's a mm -hmm. project going on there. It's been going on for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. A lot of material down there and mm -hmm. uh, heavy equipment. I'm just wondering, uh, what's the project? I believe that is a pump station. So that's through the engineering. Okay, um, that's what ends up all in the ground. Is that what yep. it is? Yeah. yeah, so I only had really just kind of heard today more about it, but. Yes, they have a huge hole there that's yeah. 30 feet deep. Um, and I believe a pump station What's it is. What's pumping? Sewage? Yes, and water. So. No, just sewage. Just sewage. No water. No water. We try that to mix. Okay. <laughs> I have a question about the Postmark Square. Yes. What is the situation for parking? So Postmark has... <laughs> yeah, Postmark has 72 parking spaces and 50 of those will be contained within the garage. So. Mm -hmm. Is that in addition to those apartments currently there? Yep. Well, yes, it's a different development. We do not have. I'm sorry. What was the question? Yeah, senior yeah, housing. Senior housing. Um, we don't have anything in the line for strictly senior housing, age restricted housing. Reading Woods has some units. I don't. Um, but uh, yeah, 55 and older. But we have any developments come in for that um, as of yet? So. Ultimately, what is the decision on how high these buildings should be? Five stories is kind of tall. Our zoning bylaw has heights for different uses, whether it's a residential building, multi-family, single-family, or a commercial building. Um, but smart growth, and again, 40B especially, can kind of supersede your zoning bylaw. So that's why we try to work with the developers and. The neighborhoods to get what's best, but it's a it is a controversial topic sometimes. The massing of some of these projects and that's why Eaton Lakeview was so such a good process because they've made such a good transition area with the townhouses to the 
50 unit building being in the back that's kind of tucked away and hidden, so. What's the, um, as far as the fire department, can they handle that, or is that? Yes, they are involved in our process heavily. They come to DRTs, they provide memos. So the fire department is always aware and always provides very good feedback. They're very on top of everything from sprinkling to truck access and turning movements and more. They're very much involved and we're very thankful to have the team that we do with them. Yes. So I can see very sure we're going to get one of our families. Yeah. And they're going to want to go to school. Have you taken that step yet? Um, I would imagine so. I don't know the school statistics. I believe it's in our economic development action plan. Um, but yes, those were all accounted for. Okay. And all we right. know that that is a thing. Um, oh, yeah. But as people age, you would see in the action plan that families are moving out and that uh, we want to bring more families in. It was one of the goals. Joe had a question over here. Joe, can you raise your hand? <laughs> I, it doesn't always pay to be small. <laughs> but um, I, I was wondering, when we were talking about the, the, the Lakeview apartments, mm -hmm. uh, you showed on the screen quite an area of empty land that was just going to be Built on. Mm -hmm. Now, where is that land? Because the only thing I can picture in that um, part of town is the Zany construction. Yep, that's is it. Is that where you're talking about? Yep. So, do they not now own that property? And has the town purchased it? What's that? No, they own that. They I still believe. own the property? Zany's? So, I don't know what Zany's, um, but. The town has to purchase the property. No, no, no. nope. Um, whatever private development or transactions went on, I'm not aware of. But our applicants um, are just eating the view development, and as far as I know, they own both lots that they're building on. So. Okay, that's interesting. Working with several people that Publicized about it, or but that's interesting. Yeah, I tell about it. No, it's a private development. It's a private. Okay. I, another question. Um, the DPW site mm -hmm. uh, has, has been talked about quite a bit. Has the town done a uh, uh, hazardous waste survey, a 21E survey? Do we know what contamination is on that site? Do we have a plan to clean it up? What that is the idea. Get, that is the idea that we imagine will arise out of this study. That we'll need some extra, extra planning, extra plans done. Um, but I know there was a study done on the feasibility and market study of the DPW and relocating that. What it would cost if we partnered with another. I mean account. specifically that the hazardous waste. Right, we haven't done that yet. It, is it, will it be part of this plan? It might derive from this. So there's no plan to get it done just yet as we look at zoning and more, but we imagine that, yes, that will have to be and done. And who's going to be doing that? This is Gamble Associates. I, uh, but under which department in the past? Planning. Under planning? Yep. Then I would highly recommend that you insist that you do hazard has yes, replaced 21 e survey mm -hmm. because if there's so much contamination there, the all the plans of the world right. won't mm -hmm. work. Right, of course. So that would be the idea if we move forward with any relocation or changes in that area. You mentioned the $50,000 grant for this project. Mm -hmm. Who is paying for the feasibility study for Walker's work? Um, so that's still being discussed now. Um, how much we're looking at estimates, we're trying to get estimates from developers, uh, not developers, but through um, engineering firms um, on what it would cost to do such a project. Um, the applicants for the E and Lakeview have publicly commented that they would contribute to the study and we would potentially look at other businesses in the area and see if they would be interested in contributing, but 
some of the economics has not been uh, completed. So you're just putting proposals up now or talking about it, no amount. No amount, yes, yes. right. We've developed the scope of work to send out, and we're waiting on our estimate now, and then figuring out how we can fund it from there once we get that estimate. And also, you mentioned St. Agnes was 50% affordable, but on your slide it said four units. Um, I just heard you. 50% of the AMI, the area median. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So that's the yeah. rent. Okay. But the rent would be mm -hmm. lower than moderate. Just for that project? Yes. yes. Yeah. And why was that? Just for that project? That's that was where the developer gets his money. Okay. Right. That's okay. their choice in funding. So. Yes. 306 Main Street, the yep. new block is still in the mm -hmm. That was uh, at one time a gas station and the tank was mm -hmm. used to the well. Was that totally cleaned up or was it just kept? No, cleaned up. It was all cleaned up. Mm -hmm. right. Just curious. Yes. <laughs> just two more questions. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, first one is a simple one. You, I understand or hear the rumor that uh, the oldest engineering firm in the country, Weston and Samson, mm -hmm. is moving into red. Mm -hmm. What? Where are they going? What? What is their? What I believe their 55 Walker is Brook Drive. Is that the past building? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So they're going in where Curry used to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just uh, another thing, since they're moving into Penn, I hope we can use them and uh, mm -hmm. maybe get them to, to contribute some free pre engineering to some of our studies. <laughs> um, and then along those lines, back to that Walker's book, uh, Walker's Brook uh, mm -hmm. analysis, is that going to include that, that um, access through the, the Rite Aid or the Walgreens? And then back around the uh, the yeah. complex because some of that's private property, and that's we route right. public traffic on that private property. If there's an accident there, that's that's a big deal because yeah. it's not on a public road. So is that being examined? Um, so we've included the Home Depot Drive in the study, and uh, of course New Crossing Road, which leads to some of the development here. But as far as I know, that's it. Um, just a few different intersections to look at on redesign and again there's different outcomes and there's different I don't want to say they could be negative aspects to them like something like a rotary which might take like some land to be some extra land to be used. Well you're sense. looking at that intersection on Ash Street. Yep. And that is is critical with a bottleneck, and mm -hmm. was, I think uh, in one one year anyway, there were more accidents there than any place in town. Mm -hmm. And and that's related to rooting all that traffic down that road and mm -hmm. then through the parking lot. So if you look at Ash Street, I hope you'll also look. Does that make sense? Is that really as wise as? We so you're talking about country? looking down through the cut through back here as well. Yes. Uh, that was discussed, but as you said, that's private property, so there wasn't much that we could include on that. That's why we did Ash and Main, because that's really the focal point of where people are adjusting to, so hoping to get some sort of, what, I don't know what redesign could come out of that area, but that's why we would do this stuff. Yes? What is the hazard we don't, um, we don't know yet. Yeah. That's the <laughs> I mean, of course, the DPW has all sorts of vehicles and more, so whether it's oil leaks or something like and, that. And but also, it, it, uh, part of that task site, which is in front of it, was a huge hazardous waste site. And, it and did some of it migrate over to DPW? We really don't know. There's just there are more questions than answers. So I'll give you a little insight. I mean, we're working with to have them come do a pre same presentation, different topics in March. So they'll be able to answer your questions, anything related to paving or snow removal. Too bad, we couldn't get them this month. <laughs> so, so if you have DPW related questions, you can come back in March when we have um, Jane Kinsella scheduled. Yes. Who owns the new building at Three sixty-six means. The new, the new uh, 
office building that we have? Yeah, 306. Uh, 306. Uh, so that's Tower Home Loans. Um, they came through the Community Planning and Development Commission for a site plan review. Um, it's, it was years ago proposed to be a pizza place and more, but now it's just strictly office space. So two floors of office space, I believe. I know I said I didn't have any more questions, but <laughs> what's the latest on the school on Summer Ave? Um, no, no, it's back. No, on Summer Ave, the, the school that was going to be built there and reformed the historic district. Yeah, it's all fenced in now. Yeah, it's been fenced in for almost a year, six, eight months. Yeah. Behind Parker, no, behind Parker. Behind Parker. Behind Parker. Behind Parker. Behind Parker. Uh, Debbie Stackpole's old house, you know, the historic house. Oh, that big historic house? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I, 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 heard I, I did hear a story that. about that, that the plan was to put a tunnel between the house and the barn, yeah. and they hit a lot of ledge. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what held it up, is that's, the rumor? That's the rumor. Yeah, it's been there for a long time. <laughs> I apologize, I have no updates on that one. Just a rumor. <laughs> I heard some rumor. <laughs> Any others? Yes. When we look at all of the projects that, you're, that we're contemplating, how many units are we talking about? Do you have a figure for that? Up over 200 for sure. So, Most of them are red bikes. Yeah. The only one that isn't a postmark. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. What can you tell us about the huge development going in on Redding Water in Wakefield? Uh, uh, oh, okay. So that's a Wakefield. You're talking about Tarrant Lane. I just want to get a guess in what, what is Redding doing. Um, so. <laughs> That's really for the Board of Selectmen. Um, we've provided some memos and comments on our concerns, whether it's from the water or the traffic, but that's a 40B, so Wakefield alone doesn't have much power, let alone Reading, um, where it's not located in. Um, but we've provided some comments um, for traffic and a few others that are championed through the Board of Selectmen. And, they go through that process, and we've had some staff go to those meetings. Um, but as far as we know, their traffic report said minimal impact on traffic. But again, we've raised our concerns, and so we can kind of really only hope for the best there. Yeah, I have a, just a general question about the town. Mm -hmm. I think I heard you say during your presentation, you did a good job with the presentation. Thank you. <laughs> But um, the downtown park in Tanier is really good. <coughs> and uh, um, are they going to have another survey done? I don't believe so. We've gotten recommendations through the Nelson Nygaard study um, to whether it's increased permit, permitted parking for employees. We're looking to increase the hours limits from two to potentially four, reduce them to half an hour to get more transition for certain businesses in certain areas. but. From the study, they had found that it was underutilized, specifically our street parking. We do have uh, only a few public lots behind the CVS across the street here and down on Haven Street. That 30 Haven is a public lot, for those of you that don't know. Um, two hour parking there, there's some employee sticker parking and stuff, but that's a public lot as well. So we're hoping that the wayfinding project is what will help with that and help lead people to the parking that they need and keep them in Reading, so. Mm -hmm. I find it hard to believe it's underutilized on a weekend. If I had to go to CVS to pick up a prescription more recently, I went down and around three times and went home. Right, so that's exactly our issue, that right. that's what a lot of people do, and right. that's where the wayfinding will help and the public, that CVS parking lot, I know is very full on Friday nights um, for some of the shops around here, but street, 
Yeah, and I think street parking is really what they mentioned was underutilized. So trying to find parking on the street is usually one or two spaces open on every building, every lot. So that's what we try to aim for. And that's what we're going to push for with the wayfinding so that you're not just circling around. You can find another lot, find more public parking that is accessible to you. So. It seems like some of the stores is coinciding um, so a few weeks ago that was discussed and they are going to do a, a traffic study to put a light and re uh, not re redirect but to, to, to really? accommodate that area so that was discussed a few weeks ago unrelated to the Tarrant Lane project but there was a lot of residents there concerned about the traffic and the impact on our roads and so Bob is obviously in contact with town manager in Wakefield and sharing our concerns, so they're always going to be talking about that. But like you said, we have no control over that project at all. Yes? When Route 28 is repaved, I assume it's going to be the sidewalk and curbing. Mm -hmm. Will they be trimming back trees? Will they be planting trees along Route 28, Joe? We do have a complete streets policy, but Yes, it will be curbing and some sidewalks and um, making some areas more handicapped accessible ramps. Um, so I don't think that the state and MassDOT exactly will do our street trees, but sidewalks, road, and curbing and handicap access, yes. yes. On Route 28, there used to be a single family house that was white and had big red X on it. <laughs> and it's been torn down. Who owns that property and what's going there? 
I do not know. I'm not familiar with the house or pictures of Next to Smith Oil, you said? Yeah. Okay. 28 has not been paid since 1987. I know. So I think that's a DPW question. So you might be able to get that answer in March when we have them here. We have RCTV here, so it will um, probably should have announced that before all of you asked your questions. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Um, um, so it will be airing on RCTV, and we can try to make that available for people who want, or they can contact RCTV to let them know. Um, as I mentioned, um, DPW will be back here in March. For those of you who are looking for parking in the downtown, particularly on weekends, this is a public block. So if you have the mobility to, it's just a block away. If you have the mobility to take walk, walk one block to get to CVS, go to the Venetian Moon, go to Bunratty's. This is a great forgotten weekend lot, well, even the, the street here. The town hall lot. The town hall lot, yeah. The public lot also is yeah. posted at Van Ampion. Yeah, but I think- And Friday, Friday. Yeah. 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 it's on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. If, if you have mobility difficulty, then that might be a challenge for you, particularly in the, these weather conditions. But if you are able to walk a block or a block and a half, this is a great parking option um, on the weekends or after center hours. Oh, I got Thank you. No, wait, wait. I just want to um, so I think North Reading has discussed this as well. I believe it was North Reading about an intergenerational community center um, for youth and elderly as well. Um, we've had some very, very, very preliminary talks to start considering something like that. As we know, as we move forward, that it will be a need. Um, but that's in very preliminary stages right now. So. Yeah, how about we get some wealthy ready people to buy walls in the front? That would be like a spot. <laughs> but there's no parking. Any, any other yeah. questions yeah. for Andrew related to some of the projects he talked about today? Andrew, good job. Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. appreciate your questions as it helped me out with some other lots and stuff and just to make sure I'm aware. Thank you guys very much, and I very much appreciate your time. So, if you have any questions, come to Town Hall and visit.